Claremont, Florida, and we're going to take a look at this amazing garage. We're here with Minnesota Mark. I hope you enjoy it. And here we are with Minnesota Mark. Mark, thanks so much for taking us through your garage. A lot of people have seen it worldwide. I'm a massive fan and very excited, as you'll probably pick up during this interview. So thanks very much hey. for having me at your place. Well, thanks for coming. It's uh, kind of a little road trip for you, but uh, you made it and the first time I met you. So yeah. let's, let's see what we got going on and I hope you enjoy. Uh, from, from down under the other side of the world, uh, I can't believe I'm here. We speak a lot with, with a lot of our friends and, and suppliers that really just are our mates that work within the industry. And yeah, I'm looking forward for you to taking us through all these amazing artifacts as well as new builds that people are buying from you. Sounds great. Let's get after it. Hey, hey guys, as you know, uh, I was fortunate enough to get the uh, Johnny O ski here. Um, there's always, there's only two of these built, and I got the one, to be honest, we don't know where the second one is or if it still exists, but uh, this is one of the uh, cool time pieces that I got a hold of and really fortunate to have it in my garage. Now, did you did you restore this or did you find it and it's got all this beautiful pinstriping and it's all it's all done like this already? Yeah, everything was pretty much done like this. As you can see, there's a little dings and dangs, but that's all part of the uh, the scars and the and the and, and the life it's had. I can't see the dings and dangs. Well, like I, I see the the amazing workmanship. <laughs> what did you? What were your thoughts when you first found it? Who, who did you get it off? Well, we'll have to go into a short story, but a guy here in Orlando calls me out of the blue and started ask, asking me questions yeah. and just finally checking out to see what I do and if I'm legit or if I'm just looking to buy them and part them out. And he told me he had the ski. He was actually the owner of Johnny O's. His name is Tim Cates. Oh, yeah. And uh, got some history there. Yeah. They made amazing skis, race skis and a blower. Oh yeah, well we're gonna we're gonna be doing some cool stuff with that, so wait for that. All right. It's coming. <laughs> and uh, basically, a couple weeks later, I asked me if he wanted to sell the ski, and he said no. And then two weeks later, he called and he said, "Come and get it." Wow. So he kind of checked out that I'm uh, I love the stuff. And uh, how long just, ago was this? This is uh, probably two years ago now. Wow. So it's an investment that would have gone up in value. Yeah. Between well, it's uh, and now. We're you loving know, it. I mean, other than the history of it. There's something else that's really cool that I've only ever seen in magazines, and this is some amazing, like, uh, traction map. Tell us more about that. That's well, original. You know, isn't it? this is uh, this is, is a jet gear. gear. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a it's kind of like an all foamy kind of a pad. They did a little of that back in the day. Um, just some unique stuff. I've never seen one other than on this ski. I actually uh, ran across one not too long ago, but that's just kind of what they did. Some kind of knockoff, one-off stuff. Yeah, but it's just testament because. These skis, this model was made for so long, the, the JS, the SX is the, the general, you know, um, frame. So it meant that so many businesses could make a living out of, you know, making their own brand on something that's pre-existing. Like now we've got, you know, HydroTurf and Jet Trim, which are fantastic for the industry. But but it's so amazing. There was another one, Ripper actually, Larry Rippenkroger actually made his own, a signature series. And his face was down here with the, you know, his muscles <laughs> on the oh, side. Yeah, because you know, he was a big, he was a strong athletic guy. Um, and I just love to see that because there was everything. So many beautiful parts that, you know, Jimmy from GPO is recreating or developing himself for the industry. It's like this amazing resurgence that we're all seeing. So is there anything else you'd like to share with us? There's a lot of unique parts, but is there anything unique that you'd like to share with everyone? Um, on this particular ski, it's just, it's, like I said, it's just cool to get out there and ride. Um, the colors, I mean, they called it the bubble gummer. <laughs> and uh, the, the cool thing about it is, is when this thing's on the lake, this is about the only ski you will see. Yeah. That's... It's just it's just popping on the lake. So that's just fun. I try to rotate rotate my skis, and um, it gets ridden probably every every month, month and a half. So that's the fun thing about it, just to get it on the lake. And, and people ask questions, what the heck is up with that, and where did that ski come from? Kind of like uh, a time warp. Yeah. You know, this, is, this, is, this is the 90s. I mean... That's just, that's just 90s right there. So. It is, it's screaming 90s. So. Can we uh, pop the hood and check out what's underneath? Yeah, we can take a look in here. Go. So this was just kind of a super stock back in the day. Nothing nothing really crazy. Um, I actually popped the pipe on because it actually had still had the uh, bread box on it. Oh yeah, um, the jet car, line. Yeah, I put a different, just put a half pipe on it. Uh -huh. And um, basically this is exactly how it was when I got it. Um, I worked over uh, old 44 round body Makuni. And, um, and yeah, it's just, uh, they say nothing's really been done to it, but I can tell you there's 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 some a little tweaking going on in on in there that uh, Johnny O got a hold of, and uh, 
But it's, it's pretty much, uh, it's just a fun ski. And oh. I can see that you want to keep it original, but yeah. and the main the reason I know that is because you haven't upgraded to an SBN carb. Well, that's just kind of, <laughs> you know, the, the history. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, a actually, a actually, over there I got the motor. Um, so it is going to get a reed adapter, okay. put on a piston port, another motor. Yep. So that's kind of what we're looking to do on this ski, just kind of bring it back to history and, and keep it. Um, and show a little more of the history to people and uh, just all fun stuff. Well, you know what I like? I like it that a ski like this has gone to a man that is a custodian of history because the last thing you want is someone to buy it and part it out to make a few bucks, which happened so much oh, back yes. in the day. So yeah. to find something like this, it's a bit of a unicorn. It's a time piece. Yeah. You know? and, and if you ever sell it, I'm sure it won't be the money that you're looking for. It'll be the right person yeah. that'll look after it, either you know, look, you know, watch it, and, and just enjoy what it is, the history, or ride it and maintain it. Yeah, just uh, as long as I can ride it, I'm going to be riding it and enjoying it. So, Brilliant. so that's kind of the Johnny O ski. All right, can we pop the hood back on this? Oh, you can just leave that. It'll be all right. All right. We'll leave it, leave it sit like that. So yeah, you've got uh, an avenue of honor, a, a wall of history. Tell us about these amazing your collection, all the PJ well, skis, laser jets. You know, some of these skis here that I have on my wall, I got a hold of and found. Some of them are donor skis for a couple, some of the builds that I'll be doing. Mm -hmm. I got the old 74 blue, um, which is kind of a, a unicorn and fun to have. Absolutely. Um, is that, are, they, are they 440s or 400s? 400s, they had 400s in there. Wow. Is so, that the one with the, um, the head has actually got an inbuilt piece with the, for the cooling or is that going to the next stage? This has got, yeah, it's got that weird little flute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that kind of a deal. It's kind of where it all began. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just got a hold of that probably about a month and a half ago. A guy up in uh, Georgia said, "Hey, I got a ski for you," and I said, "Yeah, I'll be glad to take it." Mm. Um, I can see I, you're a bit of a butcher's fan with the, the different pipes yeah, at the top. Yeah. And, and is that an original ski there? Or is that a well? Record? That was no. That is uh, that butcher ski on the wall. That is a. Uh, it was done in the time period, but it was not done by butch. It's very As you nice. can see, the hand pull is a little different. Oh, yeah. uh, the sun got a hold of the uh, fluorescent colors, but I'm just going to bring it back kind of as it was mm -hmm. and uh, just. Run it, have fun with it. Beautiful. And then we got the PGS skis, of course, and I got to get after this. You know, the, the thing is, is I got to do these builds. You know, I got bills, uh, bills to pay. Yes. Yeah. So these are projects, and people say, man, is that guy just going to leave these things they're on the wall forever? Projects, right? Yeah, they're, they're yours. Yeah. So, but I'll be, uh, I'm going to get after one this year, and uh, got some cool ideas for one of the laser jets that we're going to be doing. And uh, so when the hurricane came over, is it hurricane you call it over here or Hur cyclone? Hurricane. Hurricane, and, and it dropped the power. Did you just? Roll out the laser jets with the uh, the solar panel, so you could get you could cook up of it. I, I could have, but we didn't have <laughs> any power here. So oh, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad you were okay. Yeah. I hope so then, uh, other than that, I'm just uh, Mr. Organized. I mean, that's just what I do. Um, Come I... and have a look at this. <laughs> this this makes me smile. Skis make me smile, and projects and good people and and having fun. But look at this organization. I, I'm going to pick anyone. Let's go with washers. I'm gonna open this correctly. Is it from this angle? Yep. I mean, look at that. I'm not gonna open it, but they're all clean. They're all individual. You know which which bay everyone's in. Ten mil. What's under of this? Look at that. Could you imagine how much easier your life would be if you know exactly the length and the the dimensions that you need? Everything is there at a fingertip. There's everything. Miscellaneous wires. I can't think of anything more you need. Shims, sponson bolts, everything. All your tools, it's, this is how you do, this is why skis like this exist in such an immaculate uh, way and, and they perform well is because when something needs to happen, it's, it's at your fingertips and you know where it is. The right tool for the job, it's maintained. This really makes me smile. Um, and I, I, it makes me sort of remember those pictures from the, the late 80s, early 90s of when those massive uh, teams like PJS and Butchers, uh, West Coast, they would have walls and walls of their, you know, all the right tools, all these amazing products that they would come out with. So kudos to you. And it doesn't surprise me, to be honest. This is why they're so, they're so clean and you do such a great job. Well, it, it makes life easier. I mean, uh, the time frame, um, you know, cut down on knowing my tools, where the parts are, where my nuts and bolts are. I don't have to go through a jar full of bolts and clean them. They're ready to go. Um, everything is ultrasonic cleaned and... And, uh, oh yeah, we were having a chat about that earlier. Can you just give everyone a, I, I knew a little bit of background, but just give a, a quick update of what ultrasonic cleaning is. Um, it's basically just a little machine. You can get them at Harbor Freight. They usually go for, I think, under a hundred bucks. And uh, basically uh, you just put some water in there. I usually use just a uh, powder dish uh, detergent from the laundry. Mm -hmm. Stick them in there for uh, probably about 10, 15 minutes and clean them up and put them away. 
Yeah. Let them dry and, and, then and then they're clean, ready to go. Put they're, Loctite on there, put yeah, a bit of oil, whatever you need go. with the yeah. right bolt for the right job. For sure, for um, sure. Well, let's keep rolling through here. This is a customer's engine. Yeah, this is a customer engine. It's going in the 750SX that we got sitting here. It's all ready to go in. Is that, is that Yeah, one? that's this one here. Yeah. This one's our, all primed and ready for paint. Well, um, if you haven't already, you must be, whoever's watching, should be suitably impressed because that is an immaculate engine something you would see in you know a, a race car shop or something like that it's everything's clean um, looked after beautiful paint on there so yeah nothing's left to chance you know it's gonna start first time and, and you know do the right job look at the prep work and everything's sanded down at what stage are we at with this, is this the um, primer what, going yeah on? this is all primer just has to be sanded uh -huh. and, and painted and then right. basically put together there's the motor so the bay's down the bottom's down so I just have the uh, top half to do. Looks like you do it all yourself, is that right? Yeah, I do all the painting. I, I do everything on the skis, from A to Z. I take them all apart, uh, do all the sanding, all the painting, um, all the motor work. The only two things I don't do on the ski are the bores and porting. Right. And that's uh, that's all I don't do, everything else I do. So, so you're the one-stop shop. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, the... I, that's what I do, and I, I'm, I'm blessed that I get to do this. Yeah. Um, it only took me like 50 years <laughs> to find what I like to do, but that's all I do, and I work out of my garage, and, and it's just great. Well, it's perfect that it's the right time. You know, the industry, people are absolutely loving these skis. It brings back a lot of memories for those people that enjoyed them back in the late 80s, early 90s. So thank you for, for doing that, because it only makes the industry better, because someone will see this and go, I want that. Or I'll aspire to do it myself, or they'll go to you and go, I want something better. You know, <laughs> I've got better. the money, I've worked for you know my life and my career, and now I want my toys, and well, they'll come and see you for it. It's it's funny you say that because probably most of my customers are fifty to sixty five years old. They remember when, and they want to ride again, or they yeah. want ones for their kids or grandkids to try. So that's just the cool thing about it. Um, it's just the history. People once once you once you rode one of these or one you did one with a kid. You, you, hooked. you might, yeah, you're hooked or you might have got away from it because of the family and, and work and business, but you know what? You kind of come around, back around to it. And, uh, you know, I've been in this about 35 years and I, you know, you go through, you know, moving and kids and family and, and sports and, and, uh, it comes back around. I mean, example of that is, uh, the ski here that, uh, it's, I call it the uh, Bart ski. Um, this ski here, I bought brand new in 90. Um, I've had it its entire life. Um, Sorry, why do you call it Bartski? Well, I guess I'll have to show you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so while, anyway, you, while you're getting at that, I, I, you make a point on that it's a, the, the older generation that are getting it. What the younger generation don't understand, and they will, because once they start wrenching on them, it is actually hard uh, in the sense that... Sorry, I shouldn't say hard. It's just that it takes a lot of uh, patience and, and a bit of work and education. But the older guys and girls that, that get these skis from you. Now you know why it's called the Bart ski. You gotta look in the back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just jetting, man. I love it. So Eat my is, shorts. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, the Simpson back in the 90s. This was all uh, hand painted. This is uh, really kept well, because if you can look down here, there's no there's no warping. A lot of these um these rubber bumpers, they're a bane of many people's existence because when you did take, one, they didn't last too long in the sun, but when they did come off, they leave this kind of gap, which, you know, people like Jet Trim have made excellent covers, but there's still, you know, a lip that comes, the line gets changed down here. But this is quite nice, considering well, its age. Well, I, I kind of got a technique to, to fix them. Oh, gotten, gotten kind of good secret at Secret proprietary yeah, technique. So, um, but they pretty much all have to be fixed. But uh, yeah, this is uh, this is probably my special ski. I, I've owned it its entire life, and uh, yeah, um, it's just my favorite. Actually, uh, the whole ski, this whole ski is original ski. Uh -huh. um, I probably got um, over 300 hours on the ski. What? It has never been. It's got the original top end kit on it. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I, you I've, put in 300 hours of riding About 300 hours on this motor. Wow. Um, it has never been rebuilt. It's got the original crank seals. They're a little lean when I get up on the top end, but you kind of know how to run it. Um, and the reason why I've kind of kept it the way it is is, is uh, I've been running AMS oil and saying 100 to 1. I run my skis 80 to 1, um, but it's an original. The okay. carburetor has never been rebuilt. Wow. And, yeah, so and I've lost about 12 too? pounds of compression right. since it was brand new. Right, so, so, that so tells low me, compression and yeah. maintaining it. What are, what are some of your maintaining techniques? If you were to give you know, some of your quick tips on what people don't do but they should, you know, it's 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 really not complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try to tell people. You know, some of my key things is, um, for an example, a lot of people as soon as they get their skis, 
done riding for the day. Yeah. Um, they will pull it out of the water and start them right up. Well, that ski is as hot as it's going to be already. Yep. And you're just making it hotter. There's no cooling going through it because it's sitting on the trailer. I personally don't start my skis until I get home. Right. So or, actually, or a couple hours later. Time off. Yeah, yeah. Just give it a break. Let it cool down. I pull the hood off, and then I'll fire it up and uh, dry it out. That's a really good point because the water's. You know, you, you're intending to get it out later. Like, it's not like you're going to bed, because that's a big problem. Everybody says, flush your ski. But it, immediately, people are thinking, all right, I'll do it straight away. But unless you're getting it to the hose to hook it up so it has got the cooling in the circuits, then you're actually asking for problems. That's I didn't even think about that. So yeah. giving it to some time to, to cool down, yeah. get it home, and then put I'll, it on the I'll, hose. I'll start it, uh, you know, a couple hours later. Yeah. And then uh, a couple more days later, I'll start it again and dry it out, get as much water I can out of it. Mm -hmm. So that was just a couple things. And then I, uh, you know, I let the, I actually wipe down my bays. That All my a, grays are spot bays are spotless. They are spotless. I was just you know, thinking that. Um, and I just that's just what I do. I dry everything up. All the water's dried up uh -huh. before I put the the uh, hood back on. And as you can see, I leave it all always a, a gap in here. Yeah, that's it. That's how all my skis sit. Yeah, whether you use a bit of a chunk of wood or or well, a, yeah, I just use any feet of PVC just, just to keep a, keep the air moving in there. Yeah. Um, and the other key factor is, is is when you go to the here's here's a couple things that I have found, especially with our lousy fuel that we have today. Mm -hmm. When I go to the gas station, um, obviously we're running premium here, we have 93 octane, but I'll go to the gas station and I will put a gallon in my car first. <laughs> yep. A I'll purge you, the system yep. and then I'll put five gallons in my mix, you know, what I'm mixing okay. for the day. So at least I know I got fresh fuel for the day. And I won't use lousy fuels. I use, you know, BP, some of the big ones, mobile. Um, and uh, that's just kind of the, I, I'm really, I don't go for cheap fuel. I do run ethanol on my skis, but I keep the fuel moving. Okay. I don't let it sit. I'll use up my fuel quick. What about oil? Are you only synthetic? Or uh, what do you all I use in my skis is Amsoil. Okay. Amsoil. I use Amsoil Saber. I run an 80 to 1. You can run it 100 to 1, but 80 is close enough for me. Uh, so that's only 8 ounces for 5 gallons, so there's not a whole lot of smoking going on. Fantastic. And you got the lubrication. And that's why I kind of got this ski, because I have proof of what that oil does. We could talk for hours and oh. hours <laughs> on, on everything. On everything to do with the builds, yeah. and I would love to. I would love more time. We will do more in the future. Yeah. We've got George here that's that's a, a phenomenal ph photographer, um, and he, he does some amazing work with you, yeah. Mark. But what we'll do now is we'll continue on with the beautiful tour that is your garage. Um, but thank you for those tips. Yeah. I, one I really one other tip it. I want to throw in there is when I go to the lake, I'll usually pull off my hood, mm -hmm. I'll fill up my ski, and I'll start it yep. right before I even put it in the water. So its ski is warmed up. I'd check and see if there's anything loose, any bolts loose, anything rattling around that shouldn't be rattling around. You can kind of see it right there and then and then put it in, and as soon as you put it in the drink, it's ready to go. And let's break that down a little bit more before we move on. And you're saying you start it, it's idling along, do you give it a few revs, is it a couple of minutes? Give, give us a few more specifics. I mean, I just kind of keep my head on my hand on the head. When yep. it gets warm, shut it down. Okay. I dry start my skis. I don't hook my skis up to the water. I don't recommend it unless you really know what you're doing because I've seen a lot of drowned skis. Um, people don't understand how much water is coming out of their house, you know, 80, 100 pounds of pressure. And they're uh, turning the hose on before they start to ski and turning the ski off before they turn the hose off. So there are some problems. So if you don't really know what you're doing, you can dry start these all day long. When they warm up, shut them down, start them later. So I have many more questions, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> open the Pandora's box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we want to get to the, to the right down. at some point. But is that, do you want to show us the engine on this one, uh, or is sure. there, are there are there more that we should um should be focusing on, or do you tell me? Well, whatever you want to do, we can do. It's all good fun. So. <laughs> Seems like everything is a uh, is a show ski here. I'm not going to go in front of it. So I just want to have a quick yeah. peek in there. So that's uh, that's all original. I mean, yeah. tell us about these braids that you put on. I uh, actually, I'm... I did this a few years back before uh -huh. I really got into it. it. They have to be redone. Um, there's some better ways to do it that I've learned over time, and uh, I just have to, you know. I wish I wish I could only work on my ski, but you know, you got to pay the bills first. So you but. can really tell it's original because. I don't know what it is, but it's it's a finish of a head. If it hasn't been taken off, and just the color or, or something yeah. to do with it, you That's just know. original. It, yeah, you know it's original, and those original chrome um, nuts as well. Yeah, them are all original. Everything on this motor is pretty much real, other than a little braiding and a half pipe. And it's got the original round body BN carburetor. It's a uh, supported motor, uh -huh. so uh, yeah, it uh, it'll it'll keep up with the eight hundreds. Brilliant. One other thing I do have to ask, when you are getting the water out of your engine bay, are you using any any soap, any chemicals? What are you doing to get it out? Well, I mean... Because sometimes you get you know, that mucky lake water, well, depending I, on where you're Yeah, skiing. I'll just take a towel and 
wipe them up. Yeah. You know, I just kind of so know, really sponge, just drying it. Just drying it off. I mean, I you know a lot of times I'll see people that have a little bit of oil down there. I'll just hey put some Dove dishwashing soap in there. Put some water in. Let it squish around as you go into the lake. Uh huh. And um, you know flush it out a little bit at the lake. I love I it. I mean that'll clean it up a lot. These a lot are the people, hot hot tips. Yeah. I mean I don't I don't even have electric bills just because my siphon bills work fine because there's no oil crammed. The line. Well, you're not sinking them enough. You're not. Well, you're not doing uh, the, the Larry Rupert but, Craig is. <laughs> but, uh, but the, the lines are clean. They're not gummed up. And that's uh, true. Yeah. So. All right. Brilliant. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, let's so let's, let's move along. We just put it aside. Well, actually, before we put it back, you said. What do you guys want to know? That's my '76. Yeah, '76. Yeah, <laughs> if anybody hasn't seen a jet ski before, that's probably the most iconic graphics kit that you could possibly find. Brilliant. The color. The the that's graphics. Original. Yeah. Wow. We could spend hours. We're gonna keep moving on though. Same with this. Um... Well, this is a, this is an original '95. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the, the cover. Oh, the cover, itself. yeah. Yeah. Is this an original slasher? It looks like. Yeah, it. that is an original Victor Sheldon ski. We've talked about this before, but uh, that's yeah. all original. That is the only one known to exist that is original with the pink in the back. Unbelievable. Um, I I have not heard of another one that exists. That's the only one that I know that exists. There and may be. This is all done by hand, it looks like. Oh, no, no, that's, it's, all, it's, all, it's, it's all, all decal. Yeah, yeah decal, but it's it looks... All yeah, that's and that's all original. And like I said, this one's got some dings and dangs in it, but you know, but it's, it's original. I mean, yeah. you see all the uh, tech stickers on top. Is it a pro mod ski? Uh, it, was, it was a mod ski back yeah. in the day. Because this, um, you can yeah. sort of tell even before you pop the hood, unless you know yeah. the history of it. And actually, the motor out of this is... Actually, that's that's the motor right there. All right. I had to test it in another ski. Um, this has got my uh, Viper motor, and I'm testing. But okay. this motor here is Victor Sheldon from Butch's, and that will go back in. But uh, that's an RC520. Wow. So that's uh, the West Coast, because they used everything. They were kind of right. a bit flexible. They could use PJS parts, West Coast parts, their own Butch's parts. But an RC520 is a West Coast cylinder. Yeah, that's, um, that's what they used. And, then and that's an original head. Right. Is it? Is it? We're reshaped. Yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. Definitely. So that's running one. two. That's running two hundred twenty-five pounds compression. Oofed. Yeah. Oofed. And uh, tell us about these. These are. Uh, you know, what's... that's just some stuff. I don't know. You know, I don't know what they did, or you know, I don't even know all the details on that. Right. One day, I'd like to hear. Looks like um, it's been dev welded and then looked after. Maybe, maybe it got too hot in it. Either you know. that, or they were doing some testing, or changed their mind, or you know, back in the day, they were. I mean, as you know. There was a lot of people porting skis back in the day in their garage, and most of them sat on the beach because they didn't run again. You're like a paleontologist on you know, a on an oh ancient gosh. dig, trying to find yeah. out, you know, the ancient Romans why and, things oh, were, exactly. were happening, or the dinosaurs and whatnot. And but people were trying things, and a lot of them didn't work. I mean, there was yeah. professional people that knew what they were doing, and I mean, that's how I had this ski done back in the '90s. Indiana and, Jones and the yeah, jet but, ski world. But it's uh, it's all good fun. It's all, you know, it's fun uh, seeing these treasures. But yeah, the good thing about it is. Victor's still around, and I mean they all are. And Victor's he's an amazing mountain biker now, and he and he loves that world. And anything he does, he seems to put in one hundred and ten percent. Are you lucky enough to have a chat to him about this ski? Yeah, actually, when I uh, when I did get it, um, I I got a hold of him. I said, I think I got your ski, and he said, I hear that all the time. Yeah. And I said, No, I I I know this is your ski. He said, Well, send me some pictures, and he verified it. It was his ski. The fact and that he's taking a call, not that you're a random bloke, but he hasn't met you before. Yeah. A good dude, you know, he's an absolute superstar in this world. He's moved on, he's got a family, he's, yeah. he's he's gone into different directions. But what a good bloke that he can take a call and have a chat about something that he's, he's left in his past. I'm sure he still has, you know, fond memories of it. But it's nice to be able to chat to someone like you know, someone's hero. I, I love chatting to these guys, and they're all very generous with their time and, and love sharing you know their good memories. It's just, it's just, it's just a cool sport we're in, absolutely. And, um, there's some great people that made it great. Yeah, and whatever it be, whether it be the Silversteins and uh, yeah, you know, um, the you Johnny know, there's O's. Just a, there's just a lot of cool people in it. So, so mod, tell yeah. us. A lot of the time, you will be very intimately um, connected to this ski because you've, you know, you've looked at it, you've, you've analyzed it, you've, you've found out the history of it. Now, with say Jeff Jacobs, there's so many cool little things that he's done. You know, he's famous for for working the bottom of his hull way before they even think about the engine and the power plant putting weight in the front to try and make sure it's not porpoising and to get that beautiful hook up so it's not bouncing it's just getting drive all the way through which is kind of counterintuitive when you think of everything's supposed to be light so that's good quick off the mark so it's good power to weight ratio is there anything with this ski you know nothing nothing on this particular that i've really seen unusual other okay. than you know just um 
I, I've seen a lot of pictures. They've tried a lot of things that didn't work, yeah. just like anybody else. But I think they kind of were getting the uh, narrowed down to what they needed to do uh, to be in the in, in the in the top three. Well, yeah, they were this very game. solid performers. You know, they had an excellent rider in you know. in Victor Sheldon. However, they had to be so much so much more cunning, so much more innovative, because they had the the might and the power of West Coast and PJS, which. They just had more money. Butchers was a mum and pop shop. Yeah. As as formidable as they were with the the rider and engine building combination, they really had to push the limits. And I love that about any motorsport. Yeah. Um, but this one here is all like I said, all original. Um, I do have a lot of handwork to do on this. As you can see, some of the clear is peeling. I can see. So I, I and I can't paint it. If I paint it, it's a tribute scheme. Yeah. And you it, may as well just copy it and then make it a, yeah, know, exactly this is so i gotta it leave it the way it is i do have plans on, on cleaning this up more but that's all handwork and time i have a buddy of mine that's going to be coming me helping do some stuff the butch sticker's got to go back on the hood but i kind of got to get it to where it needs to be mm -hmm. but nothing's getting painted other than touch up and it's staying just as it was i'm sure this this is a divided camp and and there's people out there with really good reasons for and against you know the the four to to leave it the way it is is like yes preserve history but then there's a against, it's like, well, you know, someone like yourself is the right man to actually bring this back to its original glory. But, you know, there'll be people that are throwing up their arms going, no, do it this way. There'll be others that are going, yes, I'm glad you're doing it that way. But oh, well, it's, it's your choice. You yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just, what do you want to do? Um, I just I just know there's more value in that ski than a tribute ski. Well, look, I think whatever your choice is yeah, the right so. choice. You own it yeah. and uh, you, you look after your skis. I don't think anything bad is going to happen. So, yeah, kudos en to you. En enjoy, enjoy. So let's move on. This is where the magic happens. This is <laughs> your your workbench. Yes. You've got all the tools. You, I guess you just bring them here and put on a bit of music, podcast. You know, it does, you know to be honest with you, it, it, it's amazing. I'm going to tell you this. This is my tools. This is about all you need to do. Do a jet ski. I got a few tools in the bottom and a few over there, but you know what? You don't need a, a full blown snap on toolbox yep. with a million tools. There's a few basic tools. That's like all, all I have. Yeah. And uh, everything's here convenient for me. I have some plans for, you know, um, you know, different workbench and things like that. But you know what? I, I just keep things simple. I'm, yeah. I, I'm not the kind of guy to complicate things. I mean, just, you know, hammers, a few things like that. But I keep uh, life pretty simple. And that's, uh, I, I've noticed that there are big circles and there's small circles. Yeah. And I've been through the big circles and I'll keep my circle smaller. But everybody has their choice on what to do, but I just kind of enjoy the little bit that I do and uh, keep my life simple and so. Well, I'm sure, well, I'm enjoying it. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are enjoying this, this tour um, and I'm fascinated by it. So let's continue. Thank you for showing us this. Yeah. This is a, a customer ski. Is that right? That is, that is correct. And I'm from Sarasota. And it's it's beautifully painted. And I asked just previously, are they going to get a sticker kit on there? Uh, but no, it's it's going to be another tribute ski. Is that it, right? It will be a, a yeah, it'll be a tribute ski, a Rip, Rip Kruger tribute ski. So if anybody knows the color, they're immediately going to think of the uh, the checker plate design that that Ripper Kruger, Ripper Kruger had on one of his skis. Now was that one of his freestyle skis? I believe it was his freestyle ski. Yeah. Um, there was really pretty much his two iconic skis, and uh -huh. that was one of them. But yeah, that's where this one's going. Um, I'm not doing the, the, the decal work. The, uh, the gentleman that I is, uh, I'm building for is doing that. So this ski here has about 10 hours and it's done. Right. And it's, and it's so, going. So tomorrow it'll be finished up. So if you look at that, there's there's no um, intake manifold carbs. The well, the electrics needs to be connected. Bits and pieces there. Pull and the controls. And yeah, but but that's amazing. He's obviously a very, you, you are obviously a very efficient <laughs> worker if it's just tomorrow it'll be done. So brilliant. What what are the plans? Um, two SBNs? No, it's just gonna get a single. single. Most of my customers just want to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. um, most of my most of my uh, customers are all just uh, recreational riders. Yeah. They want a dependable ski. They want to enjoy it. And yeah. they want to enjoy it. So. I do love that GPO are making yeah. these these stays. They're even now making the front ones here, so that when you put your hood on, it's almost like indexing. It just goes straight on. You don't have to worry about lining up the hydro turf or whatever. Um, That's an OEM original. OEM original, right? Yeah. Whatever, the, whatever you've got on there. A lot of the time, once you set it in place, um, you know that it might not be correct. So just to finish up on this build here, uh, obviously we used um, Jason's carbon pipe. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just where it's at. This is a pretty basic fresh board ski. You've done a great job of fitting it in because I know that, you know, some of them have to take out this part here. So it looks like you've 
You, yeah, this one, you know, sometimes they just kind of fit in a little nicer than others. Mm -hmm. This has got a stock water box, so that really helped. Yeah. But when you start doing super traps, they just don't like to line up always the best. Yeah, so right. It's kind of a Was that super traps, the, the, the ones that we all know of, and we'll have a look at it in the next ski if we can peek inside. But the, the one I've got on my ski, is that a jet ski super trap, or is that something for another application that people have just put in the jet ski? I mean, these are the old super traps you were running back in the day. I, I really don't know the history on that part of it, um, but a lot of people ran super traps. So. To super trap the company, they're still around. If you yeah, Google it, you still they're for motorbikes, aren't they? Is that right, or they can be for the exhaust system of the motorbike? I think multiple uh, different uh, parts and stuff that they are producing. I don't even know all their details. I mean, how do you keep up anymore? Yeah, all I know is that they're very sought after. If you find one that the boot, which is the yeah, the boot, the rubber. If you ain't part, got the boot, you ain't got nothing. Yeah, that's right. It's um, <laughs> it's perishable, obviously, being rubber. But if you've yeah. got one that's in good nick, uh, they're like gold. Hold on to it. So, but thank you for showing us that. And this is another build down uh, that I just finished. Um, this one here it's is... pretty uh, immaculate. This one's going to Texas. Um, I just finished up this ski. Um, and yeah, it's... Uh, Check that out one's, the, that one's the pin striping. You were saying before that it is a... I shouldn't say dying art, but it's an art that needs a lot of finessing and time to put into, you know, to getting this right. So this yeah. is unbelievable. I love the colour with the, the bumpers, the GPO bumpers. They really make that ski look tough. So, uh, yeah, so just a, a lot of cool extras on this, some extensions on it. Uh, you got uh, Jason's uh, Shriner's uh, tank cover. Uh -huh. um, it's got an old uh, retro uh, factory pipe. Is that, pipe. Is that a, a fly and tie tank in there? Brand uh, new? Yeah. Oh, yep. It's, it's tank. Uh, got that and nice uh, white color in there, not the, the stained color that we're all yeah, so used to. Yeah, you know, usually, a lot of times when you get down to the bills at the end, people don't want to spend another few hundred bucks, a couple, three hundred bucks or four hundred. Hmm. Um, and it's just... Uh, you know, it's, it's funny he's got both, though, because, you know, a great solution to not buying a brand new tank, if you know how to look at it, is putting a cover on it, and that looks great, but, you know, each well, to you know what? Yeah, exactly. And, and there's, you know, everybody has a budget, hmm. and that's just where it's at, and uh, everybody's budget and different, and that's what I try to work with, because... Everybody has a budget I mean, yeah. at the end of the day. But yeah, this one, if you want to fire it up, but uh, yeah, this one's ready to rock. And you ready? <laughs> Let's go again. why she's smoking a little bit however you've got a uh, well the customer the client has a, uh, a thumb throttle I'm, i love it every i don't know if you noticed but every one of my skis got a thumb throttle i'm, I'm a thumb it, throttle I, i'm a thumb throttle guy yeah period so but that's just me no, everybody that's fair. Own. yeah so other than that uh, it's just a minty a pink lightning down there and a really beautiful brand new pjs single intake 40 44 mil intake manifold so shout out to gordy for yeah. resurrecting that brand um he's making a lot of people happy all right, let's take a step outside. You've even got more skis. So yeah, we're gonna go riding today. So uh, you're the gift that just keeps giving. Uh, this is uh, this is an old retro ski we brought back to life, um, and this is my son's pink lightning ski. And um, we're just gonna basically go out and do a little riding today. So we got them all loaded up and ready to go. And I think this one's ready to go too here. So. highly sought after. Oh, tell us a bit about those head nuts. What are they? Um, them are uh, Jesse McComas um, head nuts. Right. Yeah, kind of cool. They uh, got plenty of room if uh, you got to be, uh, if you need uh, some uh, thick washers, but they're kind of cool, different design. And uh, I had them around for a while and I finally found a ski to put them on. And yeah, so it's all good fun. Well, look, Mark, thank you so much for taking us through your garage. We could right, we could spend so much time here, but well, we need yeah, to get on the water. For sure. Cool. Take Thanks, care. Mate. And George, continue doing the great work filming, man. Thanks, George. God bless you. Hey, look who just showed up. <laughs> hey. hey. Who's that, Jimmy? Who's that, my guy? Who's Jimmy? <laughs> GPA Jimmy. How you doing, man? How you doing, bud? A lot of fun toys going on here, guys. Absolutely. Jimmy's the reason why I'm here right now. He's putting me up at his house. His family have been fantastic and phenomenal showing me and Lizzie around your amazing state. Uh, Florida is just beautiful so we're lucky we've had great weather, 
good friends. We're about to go riding. Uh, do you want to have a quick peek at these ones? Sure, 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 yeah. Well, let's just focus on the 550 GPO ski. Brilliant. Uh, are we allowed, yeah, to, are we allowed to show yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, pick it, no, yeah, pick yeah, it. Yeah, Let yeah, me yeah. hold it. <laughs> this is a new product? Yeah, we've got a new product that we're releasing. Do you want to show everyone... Do you want to show everyone where this is going to go? Do you want to, do you want to pass that yeah, over here? Yeah, yeah. It's a... It's I'll let you be the Top first secret. Thing. Yeah, look at this. This is look at the color on it. If you can, you might not be able to see, but the in the sun, the flecks are just beautiful. It, it it's going to capture anybody's imagination and attention on the water. But that actually goes on here. So it serves two purposes. One is it looks amazing, and we all like bling that that differentiates us out on the water. The colors are phenomenal, so it gives anybody a choice of colors, but but retro, not just the flat line colors that we used to be able to get. Now we're getting the fluoros and these candy candy colors and these amazing flecks in there. But this particular piece is great to protect your ski when you're charging at buoys. Buoys, we call them yeah. buoys in Australia. Yeah. How do you say it? Buoys. Buoys, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're not just smashing your hood all the time or your nose piece. This gives it a bit of protection. So. This has just been finished development. It hasn't even been put on a ski in its final form yet, so look forward to that in the future. But thanks for yeah. bringing it out. Is yeah, there anything yeah. else you wanted to share about this piece? Uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing is it helps protect against the torquing of the handle pull in this area, because as you know, that these areas are tend tendency to crack a lot. Mm -hmm. um, where this fits on and how we've engineered this piece, it gives a lot more structural uh, integrity to that bulkhead area. So it keeps the uh, bulkhead area safe and protects it and that's our whole job is to protect these vintage skis absolutely you've done there's amazing you know information on these bumpers that you've brought back to the market it's a, usually a weak point that can get uh, damaged you know over the years that they've been around but this brings it back to life and protects it for the future so mm -hmm. thank you let's uh, let's move on to the engine bay actually no before we go even the side braces more GPO goodness right here yeah, this is the ski that also has all, all four underhood corner supports and how it locks on there. Uh, it's just so simple. Uh, this is a Minnesota Mark build here. We're actually charging the battery right now, but this is a Minnesota Mark build. This is all him. The only thing I provided him were the parts and the uh, the powder coating on the uh, to match the rest of the ski. But Mark, this was Mark's uh, build engine. The engine came with the ski, but the engine was fried. Um, and Mark disassembled it. Uh, we sent it out. This is a piston port motor. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark sent it out, had it t built to his specifications, and we wanted this thing to go fast. And for a piston port, we're really surprised at how well this uh, motor has run. Uh, I'm very pleased with this ski and, and the work that he's done with it. What do you think of the Ocean Pro head? Love it. Yep. I mean, I have had nothing but success with uh, everything on the ski. Do you remember where the, what domes they were? Were they normal cut or they swirl head? You know, they made the swirls yeah, back in the day? Yeah, this one's not a swirl, but I think mm. there might be... Is there a number stamped in the front on that ski? Oh, I can't but, see But uh, usually my guy, uh, he, he chambers it to whatever uh, whatever uh, octane we're running. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah. Well, as I mentioned before, GPO yourself, Jimmy, GPO Jimmy, has made these new brackets. Now, they, they were made back in the day, uh, these rear ones, but the front ones are a lot of work to get to the right angle. If you've actually taken any time to see the angles that are involved in here, it's a lot of fabrication, a lot of testing to get it right, and they fit perfectly. Look at that. So that actually makes sure that, as we mentioned before, the indexing of a hood just goes on in one piece. Is there anything you want to share about that? No, you just nailed it all in the head. I mean, the, the fitment of that hood is so different than either an OEM fitting or even just with the rear ones on there. It's it, it really does create a one system locking and there's no movement at all that happens with your hood. It almost like feels like a vacuum seal when you put that hood on there. Right. Um, I'm just looking at this West Coast exhaust system. You've got a West Coast exhaust manifold and a West Coast uh, pipe. Mark might be able to tell us a little bit about tuning a pipe and he's got nine, I think it's the original was nine rings. So mm -hmm. it's the longest a pipe could be. Now that has, uh, it affects the rev range, doesn't it? And then whether it's bottom or top end. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I mean, you know, most people like to run, a, you know, have all the rings on there. Um, it's just a, a better setup. I mean, people have cut them and they say, why did I cut them? Yeah. So you can't get it back, right? Yeah, you can't, once, yeah, once they're gone, they're gone. And if you're lucky enough, you can interchange them. If you've got a couple, you can <laughs> chuck on the short one mm -hmm, and right. then put it back to the long one. And what is, what does the long one do? It's, it's just, it just gives you a little more chamber. Right. I mean, that's all about the pipes, especially the reed specific mm -hmm. pipe, half pipes, uh -huh. more chamber. 
Um, we could always use a, a lot bigger pipe, but we only got so much room in there to work with. Mm -hmm. um, some people, as you know, are building them up and around and all over the place just to get more, more chamber. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but anyway, um, it's just cool. Always uh, advancing and evolving with pipes and the people that are still building them. And PJS mm -hmm. is coming out with a back with the uh, the original. Mm -hmm. Reed specific and obviously Jason's a carbon so it's cool to have at least a couple options yeah what works for you and what what do you want what's you know what do you want to do and that's the fun stuff about the the sport and the vent the vintage and all the cool parts parts especially with Jimmy bringing back these parts that we need them there's only so many holes yeah we've got to keep them alive and uh, yeah something that everyone can relate to is Lego now you might be thinking why am I talking about Lego when we're talking about jet skis well, Lego is about building and having fun and creating, and I feel as though I, I we went to a Lego place yesterday. Mm -hmm. Where was it? Uh, Disney downtown or uh, Disney, Disney Springs? Springs. Disney yeah. Springs, and we had a, a lot of fun. Great people, a great vibe, and an awesome evening. So thank you for sharing <laughs> yeah. that with us. But one of the shops there was Lego, and I thought, you know, if I buy one, I'm going to start it. One day I'll have kids, and I'll be able to buy that for them, but it'll be for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the way I see our jet skis and this community is that this is Lego. There's so many brands, there's so many parts that you can go on the hunt for online. And thanks to Jimmy here <laughs> and Minnesota Mark for, for helping this process if someone wants to get a custom ski that he builds for them or you want to do it yourself and just add parts and pieces to your own build and customize it. This is what you guys are bringing back mm -hmm. to life, and I really appreciate it. It's what it's what makes me smile. Everybody that loves these skis is obviously being able to enjoy them even more because they can get them on the water. Mm -hmm. So, Jimmy, nothing you do at GPO is done by chance. Like this used to be a product that was on the market mm -hmm. well before uh, you were making products, but it's, you've actually extended this for a reason. Is that right? Yes. The spring often, as you, everybody knows, who has one, it does, doesn't have a protector plate all the way down here. That spring will come up and crack this area and you can actually see before this spring plate was on here there's a little bit of cracking was there and i wanted to protect that all the way down as well and so. that's why there's a gap there because this plate is taking the force of this of yes. this uh piece here but when it goes down it'll go back yes, on, the, on exactly. there exactly you yeah. got that right and last but not least these ones even if it's not for practicality they just look really cool yes yeah so, and it also means that it's this... protecting your uh, handle, handle pole, it's protecting your fiberglass against your hood latch. Yeah, most people see that there's a bit of pressure on there and it's usually squished and, and uh, broken the fiberglass. But having these on there, you know that no matter, even if you're sort of grabbing it or your kid grabs it or whatever happens, that it's protected by a, a solid piece of yep. metal. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, um, let's get out in the water with these girls. Yes. Yes, let's hit the water, guys. Cool. All right, well, thanks so much, guys, uh, for stopping by. Uh, let's go and do some riding and rock and roll, man. Awesome. Cam, okay. cheers. Nice to meet you. See you, bud. God bless. See, let's get on the water, guys. <laughs>